The following program is intended for a mature audience. Viewer discretion is advised. That's right, guys. Hi, dear kids, because today we're taking a look at the Kraken Dress DX kit here, the collaboration of Alpha Max and SkyTube. We previously have taken a look at the Dragon Dress DX kit, and the difference between the normal version and the DX versions of these kits is that the DX versions have uh, nudity parts in them basically for these kits. So not only does it have bare breasts, but it also has a sort of uh, phallic appendage, I guess you could say. Anyway, we'll take a look at all of that over the course of the review here today, but let's go ahead and dig into the box here for the Kraken Dress. On the front of the box here, you got some very cool artwork of it. This one has kind of like a squid octopus kind of theme here with the tentacles, and then it has this part on the back of the head which like folds up over the top of the head as well too, which kind of looks more like a squid than an octopus to me, so that's why I'm kind of not sure exactly which one they're going for, but anyway, you can see this one. The design of this character is from Masaki Apsi, who you guys would be pretty familiar with. He does work for Kotobukiya as well too. Over here on the sides of the box, just gonna be kind of the same thing there. Going down here onto the bottom, you can get a look at what the kit itself is going to look like there front and then here's with the tentacles extended in that head part which again I think looks kind of like a squid sort of a little bit Cthulhu sort of looking thing there. It's got these big hammer parts and there's LEDs in those parts as well too and those parts can connect onto the chest to make these big massive sort of LED lit up chest cannon kind of things. There's some boob blasters I guess and there what you can see is kind of whited out is the uh, appendage down there but they've got that sensor here for the box and then here's a look at exactly how this is going to look unpainted just straight out of the box and while it looks fantastic in those painted images the unpainted version uh, I does I will admit does look a little bit lackluster I felt the same thing about the dragon dress kit as well too straight out of the box it looks cool it's a nice design but it definitely will look a lot better once you get it all fully painted so here's a look at the standard face options that you'll have with the regular version and then you have some more options here with the DX version so two other additional faces and I guess also like just a, an, another blank face that you can use there as well too. Then decals as well, you have standard decals and then additional decals included for the DX version there also. Down here this might be useful just in that it shows you what you need to build is just a nipper and knife, that's it, but then you also need uh, four of the LR41 batteries to light up the two LED units. So let's go ahead and get it popped up and as you guys can see it's a pretty deep box. There's a lot of stuff in here and this one right here on the top, this separate bag of all this stuff I think is probably all everything for the DX set. So you have additional hand parts in there, or additional faces, some additional parts in there. I think that maybe the LED units are something that's only for the DX version as well too, though I have to check to be sure but I think that's right that the LED units and those extra parts on there are just part of the DX set also. So got those. Bunch of other parts in here. We'll go through all the runners in a moment, but I just want to take a look first at the instruction manual. So you've got the main instruction manual and then you've got a separate manual for the DX version. So let's first just take a look at the DX version set here. So I believe maybe the box art is different. So like if you have the regular version, I think this is what you see on the outside of the box. And then on the DX version, you have a little bit different box art here, which is including the LED units. So I think, yeah, those are something that's only for this version. So there's what the front of that looks like. You got your parts list over here showing all the parts for that, how to apply the water slide decals onto there, all pretty standard stuff. And then it's nice that it's all in color here showing you how to make the squid appendage there for that, how to attach that, how to attach the different chest parts, and then here how to make the LED unit. Yeah, so there you go. There's that and how to attach those parts onto the hammer. As for the standard manual here, just going to be kind of the, mostly the same thing got all our parts list which is all in color and it looks like everything is all in color which is nice so there you go the entire manual is in color that certainly makes putting everything together easier because you can tell exactly which runner these are from it's sort of like a color coding the whole thing in a way so aside from the runners labeled a b c d whatever you can also can just kind of tell which parts you need just based on the color you see here in the manual. That's convenient. So once we get to closer to the end here, it'll be a little bit about just like transforming it to the sort of full squid form there. You got a base included for that as well too. And then we've got the color guide here at the back. So that's all in Japanese. There are the colors and then a nice photo reference for you. Not a ton of photographs in this, unfortunately, of the design. So I kind of wish that we would have some more photographs of the kit in here, but just lots of photos and stuff you can see online 
the uh, official like promo image and stuff for it. And then you got some sketches over here which are cool to see. The sketches for the just full character and then for the head front and back. So that's kind of cool. And just to take a look at the water slide decals, here are the standard decals. So you have ones for like blushing cheeks, eyes, and then a couple of ones that'll go around on the kit. Nothing really too much. And then we have the DX version decal, so a little bit different eye expressions there, some more kind of blushing bits. I'm not really sure what that long one is supposed to be for. I don't know. I need to go all the way across the face, like across the nose as well too. I don't know, maybe. And a couple of little bits, but yeah, pretty simple on decals. All right, so first off, just taking a peek at the faces there. They look very nice. As far as the printing goes, the colors all look very good and solid. You have quite a lot of color in there too. So a lot of nice variation and gradient there with the colors in the eyes and everything. So they look nice, I gotta say, very good. For our hand tree, now keep in mind again, these are the hands for just the standard version. We'll be going through all the standard version stuff here first. So you got open resting hands, closed fists, holding hands, uh, open expressive hands, and then trigger finger extended holding hands. Then we got this runner also in that dark purplish blue color here, J01, which I think is just joint 01 for just some joint parts. These runners also have a little bit different marking for some reason, SP01 and SP02 here, which are just a couple of pieces there which look to be all just for the hammer weapon. And then we got all of our base parts here in clear, so you got BS01 and then two of the BS02 runners here for like the arms and everything here is just basically the main base plate. Now getting into all of the rest of the runners, now keep in mind we'll just go through all the standard runners first and then we'll go through the DX stuff separately. So here is the A runner, as you can see just in a kind of dark purplish blue color, which is going to be the main color we'll see a lot of. Runner B here, going to be some of our skin tone parts for the body, the thighs, and the neck looks like. Runner C here, just more body parts, and I'm thinking probably the some of these parts are just generic, the same ones used for the Dragon Dress kit and the same ones we'll probably see in future releases as well too. Runner D, some more just kind of generic joint parts, we got two of those. Runner E is some more skin tone parts for some joints basically and shoulder parts. And then we do also have Runner E1, which I think is probably for our hip joint pieces. Runner G, a few more skin tone pieces for I think the neck, the chest, and the head. Runner H is our hair pieces here in a light blue color. Runner I has one more skin tone piece there for the chest. Runner J is a larger runner here with some of the large pieces for the armor in this white. And it is like a pearl white. Hopefully you guys can see that on camera, it does have some pearlescence to it, so it'll catch some nice shine on there. Runner K is in molded gold here, and this also has a nice shine to it, but you'll see this for all the gold parts, it's in this nice kind of orangish molded gold color. Then Runner L is back to some of our pearl white parts, this is basically going to be parts for the tentacles, so as you can see we've got four of this L runner. Then Runner M looks like probably just some more parts for the attachment of the, like the stuff onto the back of the kit. Runner M1 as well here with one more piece. Runner N, some more of the pieces there for that. Got two N runners. Also got two O runners for some more attachment joint pieces. And then Runner Q as uh, just the same, more joint pieces there in that pearl white. Runner R though, then switching back to gold for a few more little gold bits there. And then some more of that here on Runner S as well. So we got two of this S runner, looking very nice. Runner T for a couple new pieces on there in that dark purple. And then Runner U for another piece here in gold for what looks like probably the front of the chest. Okay, so now getting into the DX parts. Here is one of the DX faces with this kind of like uh, thing going on there on the sides. And then the other face you got there. Then we have our LED kind of sets there, which is where you place the batteries in between there. I think those will probably just have a simple button switch there for those. And then you have your soft plastic breast piece there. This is being like a soft squishy plastic. Because then we do also have regular just hard plastic versions of those as well too. One just bare one and one that you'll have like some cloth pieces going over the parts of it. Runner P here as well also is just a blank face piece. Also got some additional hands here, thumbs up, uh, rock sign hands there. Larger size holding hands for holding onto something a little bit larger. Peace sign hands. Then we got this other piece here which is going to be your attachment piece for uh, these parts right here which will attach around the waist. Uh -huh. We've also got this octopus looking piece here which again is just an attachment piece I think for the chest for attaching the LED units onto the chest I believe. SP03 is going to be kind of the main body pieces of the LED units. SP04 here in gold is some more of the gold pieces there for those. Then we've got runner U which is basically just some different chest attachment pieces here for that so a little bit different design on those for your chest attachment pieces. And finally LED1 and LED2 we've got two of each of these these are just clear part runners for the LED units. 
But there you go, guys. Anyway, that is everything. There's lots of stuff here to build. Let me just go ahead and get everything all put together. And I'll just say on a side note, my box kind of stinks. Not like, don't get anything, don't get any ideas. It just smells like that really strong, like cardboard smell. You guys know, like cardboard has a kind of stink to it. Yeah, it just kind of smells like that. Weird. But anyway, let me go ahead and get it all put together, and then we'll see how she looks. All right, guys, and here she is all built up. So for the first part of the review, I'll just focus on just the main kits, not the DX parts, and then we'll look at the DX parts and everything uh, towards the end later so that you guys can get a sense. If you're wanting to get this kit, just the regular version, you can see what this is going to be like just with all those parts and stuff first. But I gotta say, guys, I'm really happy with how this is looking. I really like the armor design on her. Uh, and just overall, I wasn't sure how much I was really gonna care that much for like the backpack parts and all the other stuff on there. If I had to choose a least favorite part about the kit, I guess it would be all the backpack equipment, but we'll see that more in use in a little bit. But even that, I think it does look better now that I've actually built it, now that I'm actually seeing it in person, built and on the kit and have it in hand. It looks really nice. It's a very cool looking kit. Definitely will benefit from some painting, at least doing some panel lining and things like that on it. But even just straight out of the box, it's looking quite good. So let's go ahead and check it out in more detail here. As for the basic accessories, aside from the different hands and different face options that we have, you have the option to make just the standard feet, different from the high-heeled shoes that you have on there, so if you prefer that. And for just making the unarmored version of this in general, you would just basically swap out the feet, you take off these extra pieces of armor here on the knees, and then just take off the pieces of armor on the arms, and I'll show you guys that, how that looks later on in the review. Also, you've got sort of like unarmored, or I guess alternate versions of parts here for the hair on the side of the head as well too. So instead of those gold parts, you have these bits of hair. And I'll show you that later as well, and they're easy enough to change out, but those gold parts do look really cool off the head there. Also among the leftover parts not used for this kit necessarily, you have parts to make this alternate chest piece which is from the dragon dress kit, so if you preferred that or you wanted to use this or just have it as an option piece, you've got that in there as well. And the main weapon of course is just going to be this hammer accessory here which is pretty simple. For the spike bits at the end, you have the option to have those in gold if you prefer, so you have all those parts in either white or gold. In the manual and everything, it's, they're basically shown to always be white, so I just kept mine in white, but yeah, without any panel lining, because there's a lot of nice detail on here, hopefully you guys can see some of that but yeah without panel lining this in at least or like painting that in with some thin down like red paint or something I think could be very cool uh, it's gonna look pretty plain as it just looking very just this milky kind of slightly translucent pearlescent kind of white color so on its own it does kind of leave a little bit to be desired and of course we have the base which is really quite nice simple but strong it's better than the attack girls base I will say which are known to be very flimsy this one I can feel it's not gonna break and I can move it easily but it stays tight and just for an example here you can see like that i've got the kit all the way out there like that and it's staying firm so really nice base for this i won't get too much into the articulation of the actual main body because if you've built any other mecha musume kits like this the ones from kotobukiya or the attack girls ones all their articulation is basically exactly the same the bodies are almost identical uh, but the articulation of this stuff here on the back works pretty nicely this part here for the head is on this arm which will extend out and you bring that down and sort of just cover the face basically. I guess I kind of forgot about these as weapons but you can also remove these parts here from the side of the head and these can just be handheld swords on their own. So you can just remove those parts off and you got two swords that you can use as well. And then at the back for like the tentacle bits you have these like little pieces here which will lock them together so for keeping these just stored on the back that's really convenient but then when you want to use them you just take these off and I think you just need to just kind of set them to the side basically. And those are freed up to move on their own. Now each of the four parts are connected via a ball joint here and there's a bunch of articulation points among these so you can just fold out the kind of tentacles I guess as they were to be like that at their full length so you have articulation points kind of all along here and you can rotate those as well too. So as we're taking a look at a few just sample poses here using just the main kit again just focusing on the main kit I gotta say I really like this kit quite a bit more than I liked the dragon dress to be honest I really liked the design of the dragon dress it was cool but then actually having the kit in hand there was some very flimsy parts and it just kind of was a little bit kind of a pain to work with. This one I'm not having that experience at all this one's not giving me any trouble which is fantastic. I really like the design and especially I'm really liking uh, just like the character design as well too. It's really nice. And the more I'm looking at the face, I think that one of the reasons might be because the face sort of looks very similar to the face animation style of Genshin Impact, which as you, some of you guys may know, is a game that I'm playing quite a bit these days and I really like. It's basically the only game that I play these days. But anyway, the character looks like something out of Genshin Impact, which I guess maybe is one reason why she's certainly appealing to me. What do you guys think about that? Do you agree or is that just me? But so take a look at these and then let's move on to taking a look at the DX parts. For the LED units, I've gone ahead and picked up some batteries for this. So you just press the switch to turn that on. 
then you put this back into here. So it's not that easy to turn those on, unfortunately, because you kind of have to take this apart. But then once that is apart, then you just slot this into here. And that's lit up pretty well, but honestly, those LEDs are not that bright, not very strong. It's lit up though, and then you can slide this open like that to expose some more of that light. Now, of course, if you're in not quite as bright lighting conditions, it's going to appear more visible compared to obviously this one here, which is not lit up. So, I mean, you can definitely see the difference, lit up or not. But I mean, it's not a super bright thing. So a couple of things that you can do with these. Number one, you have this uh, stand piece here, which you can use to just have this floating on its own. You could make the stand longer or something like that. But it would appear that you only have the right connection pieces to make one of these, or if you had the character not on there. But basically this piece, which plugs down into the base, it seems you only have two of those. So you do have the character and this, or two of these. Otherwise, you attach this gold piece back onto the back here. And then also, I mean, just for example, obviously these parts here, open up aside from just the whole thing it's kind of sliding to open up like that just as far as the articulation of these goes but of course you can attach these onto the weapon as well by just replacing one of these spike bits pull that out and pop this onto there and then you've got your hammer and obviously you could put one on both sides we'll take a look at that here in a little bit but you can do that or you can attach them onto this uh, octopus chest piece here i need to remove that gold part again it just plugs directly onto here but there you go. So it'll be like that once we have both of these lit up and plugged onto there, you can have your big giant uh, LED unit blasting cannon boobs, basically. So we'll see that in just a second. One more thing that you can do with these as well is use this attachment piece here, which plugs into there, and then you can use this to replace the hand. So as you, you can give her these giant LED unit uh, weapons as her hands instead of like a, just actually holding them in the hand or anything like that, or just like a free floating piece. So in place of the hand, you just plug that right into the wrist. Here's the attachment piece that just basically is kind of a softer plastic, so you just fit this around the hip section and it's an appendage with a mouth. Really reminds me of Shin Megami Tensei, if you guys ever played that game. This really looks quite a bit like that. And then you have your two versions of the breast piece. One is in the hard plastic and one is in the softer squishy plastic. So while those LEDs do look cool and they certainly beef up the hammer weapon to look a lot more interesting than it does for just the standard version of that, which looks, I mean, just kind of a little bit underwhelming to be honest, is definitely causing some weight issues. Not in the arms, the wrists where you might expect. Those are actually holding up the weight of it quite fine because it's just a very heavy weapon now that you got so much bulk added at the end of there, uh, plus the LED units and the batteries and everything in there. Uh, but where it's causing weight issues is actually in the torso, so I, I'm having to do a little bit of a balancing act. It's just barely holding on now, but I was having some trouble getting it to pose because basically it was breaking the kit in half. Uh, the top half of the torso was coming off of the bottom half, so that is one area where you might have an issue with this just because of the added weight of those. Otherwise, the LED lit weapons do really add a lot to this, but really those are kind of the main star of the DX set for this for me. I mean, obviously, one reason to get the DX set is you want the lewd parts, and that was definitely the case with the Dragon Dress as well too, but the Dragon Dress, basically, that was kind of the main thing of the DX set was just to get the lewd parts for the kit, and you have that with this set as well too, which those are all good and well, but really the LED units are kind of like the best part of how this set, they're really the kind of thing that makes this kit go from an already really great kit and just the standard version to a really awesome kit with those LED units added just as extra weapons so those are really kind of the a really good reason to get the DX set or with the dragon dress with the first kit that came out the DX set I, I mean only really only real purpose to get that was if you wanted the loot parts but this one you really get a lot more by getting the DX set aside from just only the lewd part. So definitely I would actually recommend the DX set in this case and I'm looking forward to the third kit that's coming out from them. I think it's coming out towards the end of this year um, or beginning of next year. It's still a little ways off. But that one as well looks like there's quite a bit different between just the standard version and the DX version. So I'm looking forward to checking that one out and seeing what I think about that and of course sharing that with you guys as well too later on. But for now, what do you guys think about this kit? Is this one that you were wanting to get or has this review changed your mind? one way or the other. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Would you want to get the DX set or just kind of settle for just the standard version? Which I mean, either way, you're getting a great kit, so you couldn't really go wrong with either version. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for your support, and thank you USA Gundam Store, of course, for making it all possible as well, too. You guys can check these kits out at USA Gundam Store. And if you're looking for more Mecha Musume kits similar to this, of course, we got Kurabukiya Girls and Attack Girls and all that other kind of good stuff that you can check out there on the website. And of course, Bandai Gunpla and all that good stuff as well, too. So check out the link and the coupon code down in the video's description. Until next time, guys, I hope you're all having a great day. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.